Okay, so let's make a, a few examples with uh, 2D Perlin noise. And uh, uh, to get Perlin noise, you need to uh, input uh, two variables. And so we're just going to make a grid and then uh, input each of those points into, into the Perlin noise. So Python script uh, import Rhino script syntax as rs and import uh, Perlin and uh, so what you need to do first is you may need to make a simplex noise and so we do that by Perlin simplex noise and then from that noise we can from that object we can do sn dot uh, noise two, and we pass in an x and a y, and we get back some Perlin val, uh, some Perlin value, which I'm just calling Perlin val, and so uh, this is the the code. These three lines are, are what you need to uh, access Perlin noise. Um, from the module that we downloaded earlier. Uh, so let's make our grid and we're going to do that by making a nested for loop. So 4i in x in range x in 4j in range y and we're going to put this Perlin value in there. And instead of x, we're going to use i and j. And uh, so, um, so basically, we have uh, this makes our grid of i and j and so we pass in each of our i and j's into there but um, I've found out that if you just do that then um, you need uh, I found out that it's best that if you uh, scale that some way so we're gonna do i times scale x and j times scale y, y. <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> Okay, so, and then we want to, um, so that, what that does is it creates a grid of X and Y values, and uh, our Perlin noise returns a value, and so for this example, we're going to use that value to uh, describe the height. So, um, we're going to add a point, rs.add point. And we're going to add it at i, j, and Perlin val. And we're going to add that to a point list. And we're going to pass out the point list. And we should probably make a point list up here. Okay, so that follows like the basic structure that I use a lot is make an empty list, fill it, and then pass it out. Uh, so let's test this. Um, okay, so we need to make our values over here. And what did we have? We had scale x, and that should be a float. We're going to make this a float and name it scale y. Oops, scale y. And our x and our y values should be integers. So. So let's say we want a grid 15 by 15. 
our scale. Um, I found out that if uh, you use smaller values, it's more clear. So let's just do that. Let's just do evenness. So here we have uh, the Perlin noise, and as you can tell, I mean, you can't really tell that it's um, Perlin noise right now. It looks like it might as well be a bunch of randomness. Uh, so if we scale it, if we put in um, really small values here, you can tell that it smoothens out. So I'm actually going to make a um, really small. And I'm going to make a mesh uh, from points. And I'm going to put those points in. And for the U, I'm going to use that. And just in case we want to have a different um, Y, I'm going to do that. So now we have this. Uh, I'm going to... OK, so now we have uh, this mesh. And so now it's the best time to talk about what Perlin noise actually does. OK, so it takes a value two values like we said an x and a y and then it returns a random number between negative one and one um, but the thing that makes Perlin noise special is that um, similar values that you pass in in the x and y coordinate uh, produce a similar um, produce similar outputs so um, this x is close, or like this position is close to this position, and this position, and this position. So the output is also going to be similar. So um, I'm just I just did that so so I could my camera would be moving correctly. Okay, so th that gives us a basic idea of what it does, um, and we can scale it in both the x and the y direction. So if we, you know, give it a large input there, then. Um, it's going to be choppy along the y direction. Um, but a smaller value creates a smoother transition along uh, the y. So if you go clear down to 0, it's going to be flat. So you can see that it's flat al along the y. Okay, so that uh, gives us a little, gives us one example of uh, of Perlin noise, and uh, down here I have uh, another example or another thing that we can plug our value into, and I'll explain what it does. So, um, let me preview. Okay, so now instead of using that. Uh, Perlin value. Okay, so um, the point, our point, uh, the x point that we put in, uh, oh, excuse me. Okay, so the z value of this point is the Perlin value. So out here, I just took that. So this is the Perlin value that we get out when we put in the x and y. Um, so uh, and that's that value is going to be between negative one and one. So so you can see we're close to zero. We're negative, um, but we won't be above negative one, or we won't be above one or below negative one. So um, I just remapped it. So I took 
the values, uh, our Perlin values, and I remapped it. And I, okay, so I did the bounds and used that as uh, the source. And then our target, I made a domain down here. And so now it takes, uh, okay, so I did that. And then what I did was I passed in the X, I took the X and Ys off of that grid of points and made a new point. And so that point will be the center of our sphere. And uh, the sphere's uh, radius is based on the Perlin noise. So you can see um, the same concept being applied here where you pass in similar X and Y coordinates and you get in. You uh, The return value is gonna be similar. So you get this kind of uh, clustering of you know points that are similar and these points are similar so uh, that's just a, another way that you can uh, you know, look at it and you can play around with this a bit uh, and do um, a lot of I think you can do a lot of interesting things with uh, Perlin noise these examples um, are just kinda to get you started so if you want to scale, let's stretch it or smush it in the X. Yeah, so that's, I think that's pretty interesting and uh, we'll have uh, some interesting uh, applications for uh, your future projects.